This is Perspectivas Latinas, a community service of CAN TV. I'm your host, Juan Carlos Hernandez. Sometimes communities must be very deliberate in keeping and passing musical and art traditions to future generations. Today, our guests, Carlos Flores and Jeff Cuss, are here to talk about how the Puerto Rican tiple has come to be a part of Chicago's life. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, well, thanks for coming out. Let's start off by talking um, briefly about you and uh, in your background. Carlos? Well, uh, my background is I actually came to Chicago at the age of 10 from Puerto Rico. I've been mm -hmm. in Chicago since 1959. I'm more or less uh, a, cult a community culturist, cultural activist, and, mm -hmm. uh, and been around uh, in, in, in various community involvements uh, from late 1960s uh, through my radical politics as a member of the Young Lords uh, mm -hmm. at UIC. Uh, I actually have, uh, uh, when I was 18, 19 years old, somebody put a camera in my hands. I began f photographing. Uh, it was crazy to me to think that those photographs would eventually become documents of the Chicago, Puerto Rican, Latino community. And I also become very involved in the music aspect of the... Which is why we're here today. Exactly. Great, great. Jeff, tell us about how you, uh, your background and, um, well, how you made the step toward this instrument. Um, well, I'm a professional musician. I'm mm -hmm. primarily a guitar player. And a few years ago, I mm -hmm. discovered the quattro, which led me on a journey that mm -hmm. uh, acquainted me with William Compiano, the man who uh, runs this uh, instrument building workshop. Mm -hmm. So after playing a concert for him and finding out that he uh, played this, in, uh, that he, that he, uh, ran this workshop here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, last summer I joined and uh, built my own first instrument, the Puerto Rican tea play. Mm -hmm. And uh, just an amazing experience. Really? Uh, what made it amazing? On two levels. One is uh, we're in a parking lot. We have mm -hmm. three power tools. Everything else is machetes, sandpaper, files. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, lying in front of you is a pile of wood that's a teep lay in the raw. That's what we started with. This right here what we that's, have on the table. Yeah, that's a These side and a back and a neck and a bridge and mm -hmm. uh, a rosetta. And um, uh, so I learned more about instrument building and woodworking in a week than I ever could have imagined. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the thing that really got to me was the cultural value of this. This, this is an instrument that the, the guys who invented it might have had only a machete and a tree. Mm. And they went out and wanted to build something, and, and you know they failed five, six, seven times before they got something that played. Mm -hmm. They wanted to build something so that they would have the opportunity to play and, and write and preserve their own cultural heritage. And that's, that's culture, a cultural value worth preserving. I'm very humbled by it. Wow. Yeah. And you're, you're one of the main proponents of preserving and keeping this alive here in Chicago. Uh, how did this... Uh, workshop come to our city? Well, it's interesting because uh, the William Compiano, uh, Juan Sotomayor, and uh, uh, a gentleman by the name of Echevarria, uh, actually are members of a, an organization called the Puerto Rican Cuatro Project, and they formed this organization back in the uh, early 1990s. And uh, in the mid-1990s, I was working at Columbia College at the Center for Black Music Research, and they had contacted me mm -hmm. about possibly getting involved and engaging. So as a result of our conversation uh, and our discussion, we came up with this whole notion of developing the Puerto Rican Cuatro Festival. And mm. so I began planning uh, the Cuatro Festival. I shopped it around. Not too many people were interested. Right. And uh, I was involved as one of the founders of the Puerto Rican Ice Alliance. And so I began uh, with a group of people putting together the, the Cuatro Festival. The Puerto Rican Ice Alliance was one of the people, uh, organizations that sponsored it. <coughs> and so that's how our, how mm -hmm. our relationship began. And okay. so uh, we got a grant from uh, the uh, uh, Senator Miguel de Valle to mm -hmm. the San Lucas United Church of Christ. And uh, from that grant, we actually utilized some of that money to begin a Tipula workshop, which is what one of the things that uh, William Compiano wanted to do is to actually mm -hmm. uh, begin to do this, uh, do this teaching of this instrument. The interesting thing about it is also is that we're also a rescuing this instrument. That's part of our mission. Right, that's what I was curious about. Uh, um, I had never heard of a tiple before, mm -hmm. so um, 
why rescue it? Well, well, basically, you know, uh, every every country, every community, every peoples, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they identify themselves through their culture, through their language, their music, and. Puerto Rico is no different, and so Puerto Rico has their own tradition. We're not as profound as, let's say, Cuba with the, you know, with the, the way that they develop their music, musical genres. We mm -hmm. have uh, bomba and plena, which is basically the African uh, descent of uh, the music, mm -hmm. but also we have also the string instruments. There's a whole history of a lot right. of the Europeans, especially uh, people from Spain, bringing their instruments when they came in to settle in the new land. And so they brought all these instruments with them, and as Jeff uh, alluded to, uh, a lot of the um, Puerto Ricans, you know, back when these instruments were brought to the island, they began to copy and they began to copy the instruments to whatever whatever tools they had, whatever wood they had, they Machetes. began to copy the chiri, like uh, <laughs> right. Jeff says. And uh -huh. so therefore, there were like four instruments that originated from Puerto Rico. One was mm -hmm. la. La Boldonua, the Boldonua, mm -hmm. uh, the Viruela, mm -hmm. and Tiple, and also the Cuatro. Which the Cuatro, the, mm -hmm. the cuatro is so, uh, plays such a big role in the culture of Puerto Rico that the Cuatro mm -hmm. is considered the national instrument of Puerto mm -hmm. Rico. Really? Yes. Well, and then, so it's rescuing some of this, this history, it's keeping it alive. Um, how did the community respond? How long has the workshop been around and how did the community respond those first couple of years? Well, we actually started in 2006. Okay. We went and I think that we skipped one year. 2009, we, we didn't do it, I guess. Took I, a break? Yeah, we took a break, ran <laughs> out of batteries and uh, so I had to recharge. <laughs> so, so basically, you know, the whole notion about rescuing this instrument mm -hmm. is the fact that, you know, we want to leave a legacy for generations, to, you know, to come. And so a lot of, you know, like just the same way that you don't never heard of the tiple, right. you'd be amazed of the number of Puerto Ricans that are out there that don't even know what the tiple is. They all say right. triple, you know, it's not Tri triple. <laughs> Triple. It's tiple, yeah. And so, mm -hmm. so basically, you know, the community, I mean, it's really a true, authentic cultural program. And I think mm -hmm. it's a beautiful program. Unfortunately, it has gone under the radar. We have not gotten a lot of funding from, uh, mm -hmm. from our art organization. We, we have and have not applied. We have gotten some grants from the Illinois Art Council. Mm -hmm. But not too much. A lot mm -hmm. of the funding to, to pay for this project comes from uh, doing fundraisers and raising money uh, through St. Lucas United Church of Christ. Well, great. Um, so let's, why don't we hear a piece right now, okay. uh, please? And, um, and then we'll talk about how the actual construction of the Diple works. And well, it's, okay. it's essentially the mandolin of the, of the uh, mandolin? Puerto Rican folk orchestra. So it's the small, high-pitched instrument. And if you were in... Uh, a local band, you would be playing the melody like Moritza. Uh, quite beautiful. So, how did uh, he told us how the workshop originated and some of the funding he's gotten? You, uh, how you made this instrument yourself? Yes. How did you come across the Tiple workshop? Tell us about that the, the day you found out about it and and what you learned during it. And we'll definitely talk sure. about the the actual construction as well. Well, I had played mm -hmm. a, a concert on the on the Quattro <coughs> for for Maestro Cumpiano um, in mm -hmm. uh, Northampton and. Um, uh, Holyoke, Massachusetts, actually, and I got to spend a couple of days with he and his wife, and that was when he told me that he did this project, and I immediately uh, contacted Carlos. That's when our relationship began, and um, signed up for it, and um, 
uh, you know, like I say, what you're looking at right, right. here, mm -hmm. I'll help you out there's your bridge. Mm -hmm. The little bit that you have in your hand right there sure. eventually gets bent and becomes this rosetta. Oh, okay. A little, a little uh, hole is mm -hmm. drilled there. This is the neck. So when I say we carved it out of with a machete, I'm not kidding. But the mm -hmm. fret line started out, he pre-measures those because that would be a precision tool. But there's your neck. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's the old uh, uh, sculptures thing that the, the T-play was always there. I just had to cut away the bits that didn't belong. <laughs> and um, so the neck is carved out of that. Wow. This is, the top on my instrument is spruce. Mm -hmm. That's this color wood. You can also build it out of cedar. Okay. And, and why do you have to use particular types of wood? Is it because their resonance? They, because they vibrate, because they, vibrate. They, they resonate. Okay. And then sitting right there is a block of this one here. poplar. Poplar. And okay. as you can see, mm -hmm. that's the mm -hmm. body of the guitar. So we again, we cut away the parts that don't belong, and we end up with wow. this frame. Mm -hmm. The top is and bottoms are glued. The bridge is glued on. The, the trough mm -hmm. for the sound hole is, is cut. I mean, for the Rosetta, that's the, the, yeah. the, the, that bit. Mm -hmm. um, and the neck is held on with a deck screw. Deck screw. A deck screw, yeah. <laughs> and um, the, we put our own fret wires in, uh, drill the holes for the tuners. I'm skipping tons of steps here. No, no, that's in between <laughs> every one of these, there's two hours of sanding. <laughs> this is a little bitty decorative piece of yellow heart wood that goes over the end of the, the neck part there. Mm -hmm. And why does that have to be put in there? Just because uh, it, it brings these level. It's visual. Okay. If it were gone, it wouldn't really wouldn't make any okay. difference. But this is um, this mm -hmm. is end wood under here, and it and it's always very rough. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So end grain is always harder to smooth out, and then you have a choice of lacquering it or not lacquering it, and I mm -hmm. did not. Um, why not? Two reasons. Mm -hmm. One one was. Uh, I, I had to uh, take the Saturday of class off because my daughter was graduating from grad school. Uh, <laughs> and so I really didn't have time. And the other one was mm -hmm. I really prefer my instruments in the white. Without, without lacquer, they sound better. Okay. There are people who will tell you that they will be harmed, they'll fall apart. Uh, I've never seen it happen. <laughs> but I, I love the way it sounds and I don't want it to change. And the lacquer would change it at least slightly. So. Um, you know, I, aside from all the processes and all the gluing right. tricks and all the bracing tricks and all the clamping and mm -hmm. all that, just the care. I mean, little things you would never notice. The mm -hmm. holes in the bridge are cut at a very slight angle. If they were not, there would not be enough downward pressure to let the string vibrate. The string would rattle from mm -hmm. end to end. Similarly, there has to be just enough downward angle here mm -hmm. to make to give the pressure here so that the string stops vibrating there. Okay. Otherwise, those strings would just flap and make no sound at all. So mm. when I was talking about the guys who figured out how to build it on their own, right. I'm sure they did that wrong a few times <laughs> until they figured it out. Trial you know. and error. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and even though it's a very simple instrument, it's, there's mm -hmm. so much that goes into it. And for you coming through that process, um, what did you learn about music and instruments once, once you were done and what do you, and then I'll ask you about what you see in the community, but tell us about your experience first. Well, I, I'm a very spoiled individual. The worst, <laughs> the worst in, instrument I've ever played has been mm -hmm. really well made. The best instruments I play are some of the best in the world. Mm -hmm. And to actually physically make one myself and, and learn what that means, mm. you know, I mean. Humbling? It's very humbling. Okay. Oh my gosh! Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, and and to think that somebody just dreamed mm. of making an instrument to have the right to play and sing their own songs for themselves, their friends, their community. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's the, that desire to transmit culture and be part of it. I and mean, that that's really, really at the heart of the whole thing. And that's a powerful statement because yeah, you know you definitely. figure that that uh, you're playing. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody comes and says, oh, where did you get that small instrument? And then, you know, the most powerful thing that you could ever tell someone is, like, I made it. 
Wow. That, that's very powerful. But I also mm -hmm. wanted to reiterate that uh, part of, of our goal of this project is not only to teach about the culture and the history of the, right. of the Puerto Rican music and, uh, and the Puerto Rican Hilaro music and the instrument itself, but we're also providing an opportunity to people to, to train and to learn techniques on, you know, eventually taking up the, the, the whole career of instrument making and mm. uh, developing a skill of not only instrument making, but also repairing instruments. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's a whole skill that could be learned, and this, this is kind of like an initiation of getting people involved in, in, in that type of field. Okay, and how's the community responded? Um, what do people tell you after this workshop? Well, you know, the, the most beautiful thing is mm -hmm. that you start on Monday, right, and you bring mm -hmm. people together, no one knows anybody, mm -hmm. and, as, and you begin to see it through the film. It's like documented each mm -hmm. one of these workshops like a family, a bond grows. So already mm -hmm. by Wednesday and Thursday, you see right. in, the, in the videos how people are helping each other, uh, how mm -hmm. they create bonds. It becomes like a family. And, and, and so people bring home cooked meals to these, wow. breaks. And yeah, it gets to be great. And like I said, when Jeff said it was in the parking lot, we, we usually have a tent that mm -hmm. we bring in in the parking lot at, uh, at the San Lucas Church. And we set up our, you know, kind of like a wood shop uh, there and it's, it's, it's very interesting whole concept of how it works. Great. Let's look at some images that you've uh, brought to us and uh, discuss them as we go through them. Um, here we have uh, in the building box, right? Of the it's a wood kit that wood we kit. have to to use for mm -hmm. to build a tiple, right? And how much does that kit cost for per person? Well, you know, at one mm -hmm. time we used to offer it for free, but you mm -hmm. know, again, the the funding to help the funding. Now, now we what we do is the only charge that we ask is that people buy a wood kit for one hundred and twenty five dollars, which isn't bad at all. That's all they no. pay for, right? That's exactly. That, that's that's very cheap. And this image here, please? Uh, this, uh, you have Maestro con Piano. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, uh, he's sanding mm -hmm. uh, the, the piece, the large piece that they actually cut. And, and Jeff, you may want to come to this. this yes, is the, what you're seeing in the front mm -hmm. is there's, there's the lady with the sander. Whoops, mm -hmm. well, she disappeared. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But she's, uh, mm -hmm. she's smoothing the inside mm -hmm. edges of, mm -hmm. of, the, of the body after okay. it's been cut out. And well, here, we're, here mm -hmm. we're planing the neck. Okay, so yeah, it's it's a very I guess very detailed process. Even though the instrument seems very small, and requires a lot of detail and skill. Yeah, and all these have to be mm -hmm. cut and sanded. You have a couple of on shapes the body on the body of the on the outside of the instrument. Yes. Okay. And this is the most crucial part: is getting that neck to be in the right place. Because if it isn't, the instrument will never be in tune. Really, it's got to be right. Mm -hmm. And that. Um, and that's what they're working on right now is the neck. Right now we're, we're working on the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, why, why is that so crucial? I, why, what makes it so delicate, that, pro that part of the process? Because it has to be completely flat this way. Okay. The frets have to be in exactly the right order. And if, mm -hmm. and if this, if the joint between the neck and the body is mm -hmm. not exact, mm -hmm. then everything is wrong by a millimeter. And okay. if it's wrong by a millimeter here, it's geometrically wronger <laughs> the farther <laughs> away up the string you go. Okay, and here There's we have a set of uh, tiples done, pretty much done, right? Yeah. Yes, those are all done. And, and it's interesting because, you know, you don't need uh, any specific skills to take the, okay. the, the workshop. It's mm -hmm. like, as you see, you have uh, this woman that you're seeing on the screen right now. She's probably a senior uh, person mm -hmm. who actually decided to make the tiple with her daughter. Her and her daughter made one together. Uh, mm -hmm. We have, you know, uh, students as young as 13, 14 years old, even though we don't encourage it, mm -hmm. uh, having students that young, if they do come, mm -hmm. uh, we actually ask them to be accompanied by an adult, their parents, and uh, because, you know, we're dealing with power tools, and right. we definitely and want to... And very sharp knives. And yeah. Sharp knives, and so, but it's mm -hmm. open to everyone, and it's actually not only open to for Puerto Ricans, we've had right. uh, Mexicans, Dominicans, Czechs. African American, <laughs> Czechs, <laughs> uh, so it's basically open for anyone who has any respect for the culture, and we actually try to get people also who are not only in, mm -hmm. in, the, in the music, but also into educating others, so we're hoping that once they learned this, that they could actually spread the word out. Okay, so you, like you, um, just for our audience again, uh, the cost is for uh, for this whole kit here that we have on the table. Essentially, well, it's, some parts are missing, but that costs how much again? One hundred and twenty-five dollars, and then the, the instructions are free, and yeah. the tools are free. The tools are free, and the instructions are free, and um, any as assistance from the maestros that's free as well. You're not right. It's a class. The, right. Wow, it's a class that he mm -hmm. teaches. It's all free. 
Okay, and how long are, do these workshops take? It's done, you build a deep land one day or? No, uh, basically it's a very extensive course. And so mm -hmm. therefore people say, well, you know, I want to take the class, but you know, I got to miss Wednesday. Well, you can't. You can't miss Wednesday because of the fact that every day is a different step that is being thought, taught. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we start on Monday, Monday afternoon, and we usually start around 3.30 and we go until 9 o'clock. Uh, we start at 3.30. six hours almost. Yeah, six yeah. hours a day. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, we start at 3.30, so we give people an opportunity if they want to take off work, they could do half a day, and they don't have to do the whole day. Mm -hmm. And then we actually have added an extra day, like on Sunday, like I said, we, there are people who do not finish. Jeff last year had a tennis daughter's wedding, I think it is? Uh, graduation. Graduation, and so he, mi he missed the Saturday, so we actually mm -hmm. have it open. He was the only one that came in on Sunday to finish his. <laughs> but uh, usually we've had people, mm -hmm. in the past we've had people that actually have not finished and they've gone mm -hmm. home with an unfinished instrument. Mm -hmm. And so we actually added an extra day. But, you know, again, we ask people to make the commitment and dedication. And we only do this once a year. Just once a year? Once yeah. a year. And people come from all over the city or... If we this year we've had people as a young man is already inquiring about doing it. He's getting ready mm -hmm. to go to the uh, army the uh, Monday mm -hmm. and the day after. Oh the really? Construction. Yeah, he wants to do it because you know his dad. He's a guitar player. He's already inquiring about doing it. Mm -hmm. So he's you know I'm saying to him, well you know you're going to be going to the army on Monday the day after we finish. What do you think about? It? He says no, I want to do it. And so really, right? He he wants to build his uh, his instrument and he's also a guitar player and a string okay. player. Excellent. So, so um, part of it is yeah, conserving the tradition of instrument building and reminding people of. Uh, the history of Puerto Rico and the uh, rich contribution it's made to the world of music. Um, are, are there any plans for a tiple concert or a tiple orchestra? Or well, we're working on that right yeah. now. I think we're working on that. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. we've had several members from the Puerto Rican Cuatro Orchestra that have made this instrument. Okay. And so therefore, we I think that we already have begun to shape an orchestra. So that'll probably be our next project to actually present mm -hmm. the uh, Chicago Tiple, Tiple Orchestra. Okay, great. Um, we're approaching the end of the show, and I really, really want to thank you for, uh, so much for coming out and and informing me and our audience about this this wonderful instrument and what you're doing to keep it alive in our city. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for having us. Let's let's end the show on um, by hearing another piece here, please. Okay, mm -hmm. you might know this one.
Thanks so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Perspectivas Latinas is a community service of CAN TV. If your nonprofit organization would like to work with CAN TV, call 312-738-1400 and ask for nonprofit services. Tune into Perspectivas Latinas for local issues and concerns every Thursday at 8:30 p.m. on CAN TV 21. I'm Juan Carlos Hernandez. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.